Hi friends, welcome back to Common the Chaos Homeschool. If you're new here, my name is Davine, and today I'm going to be showing you Michael Clay Thompson's Island Level Language Arts. So this year I decided to give Michael Clay Thompson's language arts a try. I'm starting with the island level and I'm actually teaching all four of my kids together. They are currently 10, 10, 11, and 14 at the time of this video. I thought it would be a fun way to do some language arts together and to learn all the parts of speech just to review and reinforce for my older girls and to introduce these things to my boys. So I did not get the complete set for this level. I got the Grammar Island, Practice Island, Sentence Island, and Building Language. So I did not get their poetry and I did not get their novel, novel portions because we have our own poetry and we do a lot of reading with Bookshark and things like that. So didn't get those. Still, <laughs> what I did get is a pile this big of just, this is the teachers and one of the student manuals. So I'm gonna quickly go over what I have here and then I'm going to flip the camera around and give you a look inside of each of these. So first of all, Michael Clay Thompson's program, it's not super self-explanatory. I had to watch a few videos like this myself to figure out the order to do things in and talk to my friends and things like that to figure out how to do this program and in what order to do these books, which could we start with, which did we need to wait? Okay, so I think the easiest way to explain everything is to show you up close. So I'm going to flip my camera around and give you a look inside of all of these and just talk about our experience so far with this Michael Clay Thompson level. All right, so here is my pile of instructors, guides, and student guides. And I'm just going to show you inside and talk about how we're using these this year. So here's Grammar Island. I would say this is the foundation of the program. This is where you start. So I'm gonna open up here and we can take a look at the table of contents. This is broken up into four parts. We have part one, the parts of speech. That's what we've finished. Part two, the parts of the sentence. We're working on that. Part three, phrases. Part four, clauses. So they have some stuff here in the front telling you about how to use this book. And then this is what it looks like. So you're reading. So there's a place called Grammar Island made of words and dreams. There are fish and birds and waves and winds and beaches where kids can play. On Grammar Island, you find wonderful things such as birds and language. So then we go through and they're talking about Grammar Island and what grammar is talking about the four things they're going to learn or the four parts of language. And then we start part one. So part one, we're going to start with learning about, well, first they tell you there's only eight different types of words. And these are called the parts of speech. And then they're going to start with one, nouns. And then every few pages, you're gonna move on into the next part of speech. So there's about maybe eight to 12 pages. Oh, and I skipped pronouns, but now we're at nouns and pronouns, sometimes have adjectives. And so every so often, there will be a story. I'm gonna find that. So here's a little story about a hungry pelican looking for a tasty adjective to eat. And so it's just very literature based. There's a lot of stories and there is no real guide as far as I don't have any guide on telling me how many pages to read, what to do. So I just kind of read, I think I divvied it up maybe eight pages, six to eight pages. I stop when I feel like stopping. Sometimes I'll go and I'll look and find a good stopping place. So we've taken about two months. We do this every other day to get as far as we have. So this is what Grammar Island looks like. And just want to let you know, here's the student book. And there really is, there's no teacher introduction. It's almost exactly the same. It just has all the words. What it doesn't have are these parts here and these little things, teacher guides, teacher helps. There really is, I don't know if, the, 
There's one place to write there. Oh, so there's stuff in the back. There's places to write in the back, but you don't really need that if you have the Practice Island book. So really, like most of this is just the same words as you would have in the teacher teacher manual. So I'm going to tell you that in this level, I've only chosen to use, even though I have all the books, I've only chosen to use the Practice Island student book because that's the only one that really has much writing in it at all. So you definitely don't need to buy this the student books at this level for Grammar Island. So this is what Grammar Island looks like. And once you've completed that first section, you can start working on Practice Island. So I'm going to show you what it looks like here. In the teacher, in the teacher's guide, it's going to have the answers. So it's just a bunch of sentences like this. And when you have completed part one of Grammar Island, you'll be able to do the first line. If you've completed part two, you can do the second line, third line, and fourth line. So we are just doing the first line. Every day we do about three sentences together as a group. And this is what it looks like. The whole book is full of sentences and you're just putting the parts of speech at this point. When we learn about the next ones, we'll go back and add, add those. So this is the student's book here. And it is basically that, a blank. So this is the one that I would say if you don't want to do together on the board, you could very easily do it together on the board or something. But if you don't want to do that, you could get your students these. So each of my kids have one of these. We are definitely using this. Okay, so while I'm teaching Grammar Island, after I finished part one, we started Practice Island. But I am also at the same time doing this one, Building Language. So this is talking about Latin stems different parts of a word and what they mean. So it talks a bit about the arch, talks about the arch being a foundation. And so like these words or these parts of words are like foundations. So I just read this. I usually read about one section each time we do this. And it talks about how Latin, English, and Spanish have very similar words and why. So here's lesson one. So it took us a little bit to get through the introduction. Once you're done the introductions, you start these lessons. So we have re means again, re means again. We find roams re in English words we do, such as repeat, return, reverse, review, revise, reflect, recall, redo, rehearse, respect, and even renew. So there's a little poem about re, it has sentences using re. Then they talk about re like it's a person, talk about sub like it's a person, sub is crouching under, re says things again and again. And we have re a close up, respect. So they talk about a word, and re means again, and spec means look. Re in Spanish, they talk about a, a Spanish word that has re in it. Re a poem, so they have another poem, and then they ask you to write a poem with re. We have not been doing this, I'm just reading it basically. Re a simile, a memory is like a return, so you write a simile with a re word. And then that's the end of that first lesson. And then we have sub under, sub means under. So then they talk about sub and they do the same thing with sub. And now we're on D and X, X poem, X simile, spec. Spec means to look, spec poem. Then they have a stem story and they have just using the stems to make a story. We have super. So this is where we're at right now. We are on port lesson nine, and I feel like we're very close to the end. So about two months in doing it twice a week, we are almost done this. So dis means away, and that will be our last one. So this one will be done pretty soon. We have some review here. Let's see, assessment materials, if you wanna use them. So there's all the meanings, and here's a quiz. If you wanna quiz your kids, and quiz two, and there you go. Okay, so that we have been doing since the beginning. We started that with Grammar Island. They go fine together. So let's look at building language, the student. This is the student book. And as you can see, there's really nowhere to write. There might be something that I'm missing, but I don't feel like it's enough to purchase a student book unless you just want your student to have a book to hold on to. So 
The difference is it's missing these things and it's missing the front where it talks about just the student instructor section. So you could easily get away without getting the student book for that. All right, so after Grammar Island, you would start Sentence Island. We have not started this at all, so I'm just going to be taking a look with you. So I guess we're starting to create sentences. So it looks like these are stories. And my friend did say it gets a lot more story-like when you're into this book. So we have the instructor section here, learning to write, the heart of the process, talking about the parts of a sentence. Chapter one, MUD's two sides. Core concept, a sentence has two sides. A sentence is a two-sided idea, a predicate about a subject. The center of the subject is a noun or a pronoun that stands for it. The center of the predicate is the verb. And then concept discussion, points to emphasize, writing activities, four level analysis, which is what you're doing in the practice island. So talking about four level analysis and then they have some that you can do here. Chapter two, Mud thinks about doing and being. So kind of the same system here, same setup. All right, so I can see that, that there's a lot of this here at the front, all like that, and it looks like it changes at the end, so let's see. So here we go. Oh, so here's the story part. Here's where the story part comes in. Mud's two sides. Once upon a time, not so long ago, in a busy blue sea, not far from Grammar Island, was Sentence Island, a blue island filled with ideas. High in the wind, a gray bird could just discern the shape of the island shimmering in the ocean light. And so there's more of this story. So I'm not exactly sure. Like I said, I haven't done this yet. Maybe you would go ahead and read the chapter and then go over here to find the activities and the things to emphasize. I thought that was at the end, but maybe not. So I'm guessing the difference between the teacher and the student might be these front pages here. So let's take a look at the student book here. So here's the student book. And yes, here is the story right at the beginning. So if you wanted your, your child to have the story in their hands while you're reading, then you could get this. If you're okay with them just looking at the book you have, then you wouldn't need it. Mud wrote 10 sentences in the sand to see if he could find their subjects and objects. So you could just discuss this if that's what you wanted to do. So that's what the student book looks like. Pretty much it is the story that you have in the teacher book. So it's a little less thick, doesn't have all those teacher parts in it. So I hope that was helpful getting a look inside and just hearing about our experience so far and just the process of how to go about doing this Michael Clay Thompson language arts. If you like videos like this, don't forget to give me a like and subscribe if you haven't and hit the bell notification so you're notified of when future videos are up. Thanks for coming today and I hope to see you in my next video. Goodbye everyone.